Hey, Rock of Grace family, Pastor Jordan here. This is Will Collins, our worship director, and his wife, Tab. And uh, we just have some really amazing news for you. So, um, Will is taking on the campus pastor role at our Kinsman location. So, what does that mean? Um, I'm not moving to Florida, I'm not moving to California. I'm able to still lead the team, uh, cast the vision, guide the vision, uh, preach. Uh, on occasion, uh, but what this does is it gives me some more bandwidth to work on Transform Trumbull. Number two, the possibility of opening uh, a third campus and our other autonomous church plants through what we call Leverage Leadership. And so God was really speaking to my heart a couple years ago through Exodus 18 and a few other pa passages, but in particular Exodus 18, where Jethro uh, Moses' father-in-law comes up and asks him, hey, why are, what are you doing? And he says, well, I'm meeting with people. I'm pastoring them, sun up to sundown. And he says, well, hey, I have a word from the Lord for you. Instead of doing that, it's not fair for the people. They wait in line all day, and it's not fair for you. Why don't you raise up leaders, well-qualified leaders? And that's what he did. He raised up some leaders, uh, mentored them. And what happened was everybody's needs were able to be cared for. We see something similar in Ephesians chapter 4 where God gives these fivefold gifts. One of those gifts is that of a shepherd. And Will has a shepherd call, a pastor call in his life that I saw early on in our friendship, which is what, eight years? Yeah. Eight years ago. So um, we first met through creating some music together, and, and then when I uh, became the pastor, God made it really clear about him becoming the worship leader. But over the last few years, God was really speaking to my heart about uh, his role changing to include pastoring. And so, uh, Will, talk to us about um, your journey and when you started to feel that nudge to pastoral ministry. I guess I've always known I had that call in my life, but I just didn't know exactly the timing, what it would look like. And when God brought us to Rock of Grace, you know, we didn't come for the job of worship leading. We came uh, because we felt called to this family. And uh, I knew at some point that God was going to open that door. I just didn't know what it would look like because I've known and we've known that Rock of Grace is home. Like We're not going anywhere. Uh, and so unless God would say something specific, like, really, really clearly Rock of Grace is home for the long haul. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was just waiting on the Lord. I didn't know if it would look like another campus or just a position here. And then um, through some prophetic words, close friends of mine coming and saying, hey, I had a vision of you. And it was all within a week of people mm -hmm. seeing me preaching on stage. And uh, I wasn't sure what it would look like. Pastor Jordan and I, in the exact same day, I, I took off uh, his pastor hat for him and I said I just want to talk to my friend and asked him what he saw this looking like because I felt this call and he just got a huge smile and he said I think this is what it looks like and it yeah. was just a huge yes in my spirit and when I came home uh, for Tab it can be a little scary but uh, she said yes too and she's known that for a long time that I felt that way. Yeah. I think it's so cool how God always guides our hearts. So when he said, hey, I'm feeling this call to pastoral ministry, what do you think? I was smiling so big because I was trying to think in the last month, really, how do I approach this with Will? Because I was processing, asking him, would you consider coming on and either the label of campus pastor or associate pastor, but helping me in pastoral care? So the more we thought about it, campus pastor really is the, is the right term. So even though you're still going to be able to get a hold of me, um, it doesn't mean I'm suddenly unavailable. It's not what we're saying. It just means that with a growing number of people at our Kinsman campus and Warren campus, it's growing. But with that growing number, um, it, it gets harder and harder to tr truly meet those needs pastorally. Um, many of you guys know my dad is also helping with pastoral care. So this is not just pastoral care. It's also even the oversight of the services. In other words, a couple weeks ago, I was at our, our church that we that we helped plant uh, called Embajadores, right? So one of their goals is to start an English-speaking church. I can help do that because I can give him the oversight of the services. And he has, by the way, shown himself to be so 
reliable and such an amazing staff member that I can do that and feel great and not feel any uh, sense of worry. I, I know that the, the Kinsman campus is going to be well taken care of if I were to go to uh, another autonomous church plant to help them get started, to strengthen their systems, to, to preach uh, to that congregation. Um, for example, I was at Embajadores, and while they're predominantly Spanish-speaking church right now, we've seen them grow and over double in size because of our leverage coaching program, and they are gonna be starting an English-speaking service, and I'm able to help him do that and not feel like there's this big cost, right? to everyone at our Kinsman campus. Uh, again, this is a beautiful picture of what we see in Ephesians chapter 4, where not everyone's trying to be everyone. Everyone is aiming to be the person God called them to be. I'm a builder, um, and Will, God has so clearly given Will this pastoral heart. Uh, the man leads cops to Jesus when they try to give him a ticket. So anyway, we just I'm just so excited about uh, you will and what God's doing and how powerful this is going to be. We're truly going to be able to transform Trumbull. I believe that as leaders raised, are raised up and actually empowered to step into new seasons of impact. So Tab, um, you know, a, a life of a pastor's wife uh, is, is interesting, fulfilling, can even be challenging at times. Uh, are you, what are you feeling about this new season? A husband stepping into a new new role. You guys are really any pastor. You're doing it together. So how do you feel about it? Well, I'm nervous, but I'm excited, and I know that that's what he's supposed to do. What we're supposed to. Do. Yeah. So. She's most excited about preaching every other yes. week, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Every other week, she's also going to be teaching a 500 week course. <laughs> 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 but uh, she Tab, Tab's personality is a lot like my wife. She's just like, hey, just let me serve over here. Don't give me the microphone. Which is, which is fine. She's great. Uh, and you, by the way, Tab, if you haven't got to know Tab yet, she is very Christ-like, one of the most servant-hearted, Christ-like people you ever meet. Uh, she also is full of wisdom, so I can say the same thing about Tab that I've said about Danielle and uh, Michelle, the other pastors, wives on staff. They are incredible people full of wisdom that you can go to. And I've seen people uh, confide in her. And people have told me, man, Tab is a great friend and person to go to. So just keep that in the back of your mind, everyone um, at our Kinsman campus. Um, hey, Will, talk to me about um, schooling. Well, when I felt that call, uh, I knew I wanted to be obviously part of this church long term and with the Assembly of God. So I started schooling for the last two years. I've been doing a school as um, of this coming September. I'll be fully credentialed with the Assembly of God. And just want to make sure that we're doing this the right way, that if I feel called to this, I don't want to just be given something. I want to do it the right way to honor the Lord and to honor you and all of you that I'm called to serve. Yeah. And then um, anything else just kind of you want to share about what you see in the new season and what's on your heart regarding this? Yeah, I don't, uh, I love our church and I love being a part of this family and my call and this is not to really change anything we have a vision we have a leader that I'm called to support who is not only my pastor but is one of my best friends and, and uh, I have his back and I want to tell you directly that the Beal legacy the legacy of Pastor Mark Pastor Jordan and your family means everything to me and uh, I promise uh, I want to do this the very best way to honor the Lord to honor their family and to, and to uh, be a friend to all of you. Uh, you're truly my, truly my family. I feel called to this. I am nervous because I don't know exactly what it'll look like, but I know God is saying it. It's been affirmed time and again, and I have a huge yes in my spirit. So I am humbled and honored beyond what I can put into words that I get this opportunity uh, at a healthy, growing church. And you, you're my family. I can't wait to have you over for dinner and to sit down for coffee with you. I can't wait to get to know you more and to watch the Browns beat the Steelers <laughs> this year. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, one, one thing to kind of just close with is um, even before he started pastoral training two years ago and we, we kind of put this vision and steps into place, um, 
I already was sending people his way. Uh, as you can imagine, there's times when it's just like, man, there's a, there's a four o'clock meeting and there's a six o'clock dinner and I know that's a heavy conversation. There's been multiple times I've said, hey, can I give you Will's number? Uh, he is full of wisdom and loves the Lord and knows the word and he's gonna give you godly counsel. And so I have already trusted him in this capacity uh, in a small way. So um, one of the things I wanna give you is a visual. Uh, when I shared this with one of uh, some of our board members here uh, a long time ago, it really helped them. In most cases, when there's a pastor shift, um, it's just a pastor shift, right? And the, the, the existing pastor leaves and the new pastor comes in and there might be a lot of changes and all that. In this case, it's different in that it's not that I'm leaving, but rather that Will's coming up, right? So I'm able then to allocate more time, like I said, to David University, training of worship leaders, uh, autonomous church plants, uh, opening a possibility of a campus three, these transform Trumbull initiatives, these big dreams that are in our heart. We can start tackling those with even a little more focus and bandwidth as Will comes up in his role of helping uh, pastor at Kingsman Campus. So I'm so proud of you, Will. I'm so excited for this season for you and Tab, and God's gonna do some beautiful things.